kids are back to school. <laughs> I'm crafting. You'll be seeing <clears throat> videos about that on our main channel, The Frugal Family, here soon. Lots of crafting, lots of upcycling. All for Halloween, of course. Gotta get started early. I'm already decorating. Run right there. How fun is that? Oh, it's been several years since I did, like, major decorating in the house because, you know, there's been health problem after health problem. You guys, you guys know this. And so any, any decorating that I've done, like, it's just been the yard display, just the yard display, God, um, because with limited energy and everything and limited ability, you know, the, the yard display is the priority. That's like, you know, the neighborhood kids wait for it and even some neighborhood adults wait for it and and it brings me so much joy and it's such a fun creative outlet and so of course that is what I'm working on but I was like this year I want I want stuff in the house you know and I'm starting early enough because I was you know been cleaning out the Halloween shed on our main channel and so it's like why not start right now why not I can't start on the actual yard display yet. It's too soon, way too soon. And especially with what I have in mind, it just wouldn't make sense to start on that yet other than like prep work with the flower beds and, you know, pull weeds and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it just, it just doesn't make sense to, to start out there yet. Not with what I'm doing with my witches and my haunted apothecary shop. It just, yeah, it's, anyway. So <clears throat> instead I'm putting my time and energy here into the house and decorating and oh it feels so good I even put some wax melts in the warmer I mixed what did I mix an apple pie one with pumpkin spice or something like that you know they go perfect together so the house smells good oh anyway keeping myself busy I've had some cuddles with the cat there's extra coffee happening today I am just having a really hard time with them going back to school. For one, they went back earlier this year. <clears throat> the schools keep changing. I don't know. It's ridiculous. And my oldest, who's had so many, you know, health struggles and different things that we've talked about, <clears throat> but that I don't want to talk much about. So anyway, but that have been a, a major trial for her and for our family. She is... A senior in high school and so I've got this like mix of so many emotions oh my god she's alive she's well she's doing so great she's in her senior year of high school um, <clears throat> but then it's like all these other emotions and then lots of things that I can't really talk about here for privacy reasons and stuff like that um, I know I share a lot of myself and my life but there are things especially when related to my kids that yeah, we're just <clears throat> not going to go into lots of detail or anything like that. But if you know, you know. And if you don't, I'm sure you can guess. So anyway, but she is doing so great now and it's wonderful. But having her go back to school is like, uh, it brings up a lot of fears and nervousness. And then, of course, my Reagan is going into ninth grade. <clears throat> and he is doing so well and so great and I, I'm just so thrilled but I worry that because he's doing so well that he won't get you know the attention that he needs and stuff like that because or that we'll miss something because everything seems like it's all going so great with him and then the other shoe will drop and I'm, I don't know and then Mariah because the schools changed yet another thing she didn't get to stay in elementary school for sixth grade so she's now in a middle school so there's like seven different classes all over this ginormous campus and, you know, having a locker and <clears throat> I don't know um, if those are called different things in some of our other, you know, with some of our viewers in the UK or other countries. We have viewers from all over the world and I'm so grateful for you guys, but um lockers you know there's like a halls full of lockers and the kids have to know their combination and be able to put their combination in on the little dial thing and we practiced it and practiced it and she did great and I know she is going to do awesome and if she needs help she's going to ask for it but middle school and junior high I don't know they're they're rough they're rough for everybody 
but they're definitely rough for girls and it scares me. It all just scares me. I'm going to break my own journal rule real quick and edit this in because I just realized I didn't even mention that, hello, we're in the U.S. of America. Public schools. Kids in schools. And guns, guns, guns everywhere. That's the other fear. We had huge scare last year. Huge. Huge. Don't want to give too many details because we like to keep, you know, privacy about, you know, locations and stuff like that for privacy and safety. But huge scare lockdown situation. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So let's just throw that into the mix. Yeah. Have to edit this in because it is a very important, very valid uh, fear that I know I am absolutely not alone in, in feeling and dealing with on a daily basis when I send my kids to school or take them to school or drop them off, whatever. America. School kids. Public schools. Being a mom in America. Right now. My Reagan is developing and growing and, and he's taller than both the girls now and taller than me. And, um, he'll be passing James up. I'm sure that will happen. And he's just, he's so vibrant. He's getting his braces off soon. And I just worry, you know, because it is going so well. And same with Olivia. It's all going so well. And then it's also that the time is flying by. It seemed in the younger years that it was just like, trudging through sand, waist deep sometimes, the days, the hours, it was the hours sometimes, the diapers and the bottles and the nursing and the packing to go anywhere um, and going anywhere, the grocery stores, the pool, the <laughs> road trips, all of it, any of it, school, school functions, being a room mom, all those beautiful things. Nighttime feedings every two hours. Oh. Or creeping into my kids' rooms to make sure they were breathing just because I... Because. Hospital visits and doctor visits and vaccinations and first teeth and teeth falling out and me not being able to help them pull teeth because I just couldn't handle it. <laughs> and them crying or having hard days and problems with friends and problems with school and all of it and, and kisses that made boo-boos go away. stories and songs at bedtime and singing almost the same song every freaking night but changing it up whether the words or the tempo or the style the rockin version of twinkle twinkle little star was a hit <laughs> oh, mariah still likes a, a song and a story and i've got to do a better job of doing that with her because it's flying by it's flying by oh trying to live up to all the commitments and obligations and duties and trying to make life magical and good just good on a daily regular basis and make sure they have what they need and some of what they want and teaching them what they'll need to know to go out into the big bad world and not smothering them but also giving them enough attention and guidance and not always rescuing them, but still being a cushion for them to land on. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's all hitting me today because, oh my God, my baby, my baby, Whew. last year of high school, how did that happen? Didn't I just graduate from high school? And wasn't I just barely an obnoxious 18-year-old who knew everything about anything and everything and ruled the world?
it's a lot of thoughts. Oh, I don't even, didn't even do an intro. Hi, my name is Julie and this is my journal. Welcome. My journals are mostly unedited situations like this. Rambling, sometimes ranting. I hate admitting um, when I'm wrong about anything. I've gotten a lot better at it and apologizing and, you know, that kind of thing. I've gotten so much better at it in the last couple of years because I've really been working at it. Um, so to the women, there were a few who back when the kids were little, who said all that very cliche stuff, you're going to miss this. It's going to go by so fast. You're not going to want them to leave. I know, Ellen, you were right. God damn it. Sorry, Ellen. Sorry. But you were right. That stupid idea I had. Oh, and when they're 18, they're going out on their own because I was ready. I didn't go till I was 19 because I didn't have an opportunity. And But I did. I did it. And I flew across the country and I went to be a nanny. And yeah, I, I cried the whole way as I squoze a teddy bear to death. But I was ready to get out into that world. Years of therapy later, <laughs> maybe it wasn't the best right thing for me to jump out into the world right away. And uh, that's not likely to be the best good thing for my babies either. And I don't want them to leave. <sighs> God, I don't know if I told you guys, I'm sure I've said it on here before, but back when I was 18, third oldest of eight kids, oldest daughter in a traditional Mexican-American family, well, very integrated, you know, my, my dad, rest in peace from Mexico, imposed a lot of very traditional things, and my mom, a very uh, staunch Mormon, LDS, whatever, uh, there were lots of... <laughs> It was lots of conservative traditionalism in my home. All that to say, I did lots of diaper changing and tending to kids. And then, when I was 19, I went to be a nanny of four kids on the other side of the country. And all of that served to, to convince me I was never having kids. I was going to be this high-powered, well-educated woman of the town and city now I go into a big city and I can only handle it for, for like a few hours and then like the stench that's on me after I'm like oh god <laughs> no <laughs> and and my kids my kids my treasure I'm not gonna say that they're my whole life and my whole reason for living and being that's not healthy guys that's not healthy when people put up the little memes or say their their kids or their whole world don't put that pressure on your kids they have their own lives to live Mm -hmm. They don't need to be your whole entire world. No, have your hobbies, you know, do your other stuff. Find out who you are and learn to love you and, and you know, do other things because they do need to grow up and move out. The As awful and painful as that is, that's reality. And you need to be able to live with either your partner, yourself, whatever, most importantly with yourself without putting pressure or anything like that on your kids to feel like they now have to take care of you. I don't believe in that. Yes, um, it's so important for you to be there for your elders, for, you know, your parents and whatnot. But the, the sense of duty and obligation that gets put onto kids who never chose to be born in the first place or never chose to be brought into that particular family dynamic and to put pressure on them to then take care of parents and elders forever and ever. No, I don't. Uh, that's, that's a tradition that I will leave behind. I'm not saying that if my dad was still alive that we wouldn't take care of him. I was there feeding him. convincing him to try to drink his insure shakes there at the end. It, 
my mom was with her mother in the hospital the other day. That's kind of personal business and I'm not going to go into it, but it was my, I was tempted just now to edit that out, but I'm not going to because I, I'm not, I'm not going to edit it. I'm not going to give details because that's, you know, no, <laughs> everything's okay now. But was I there for my mom? Yep. Did I do what I could within my limits and what I'm comfortable with? Yes, I did. I went to the house. I took care of the dog. I took care of some errands that needed running and located certain medications. I locked everything up that hadn't been locked up. I got my mom a milkshake because she definitely needed it. I did what I needed to do to be there for my mom and for my dad, and I will continue to do that within the parameters of what um, I am physically, mentally, and emotionally, and financially, and all of that able to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my kids don't owe me anything. I love to use the, well, I gave you life. It's always jokingly, and they know it's jokingly, and they'll be like, don't use that again. And I'm like, but it's all I've got. <laughs> but we've had so many serious conversations about the fact that they don't owe me shit. I've had a lot of their shit. God, <laughs> no, they don't owe me anything, anything at all. Nothing. It was my choice, James and I, but really in the end, mine, I, I, I carried them, I chose to carry them. <clears throat> and I brought them into this world. They are my responsibility. And James, obviously, of course, but they don't owe me anything, nothing. I want them to want to be around me. And I hope that I have and that I am building relationships with them such that they will want to come home and visit. And that we'll have healthy boundaries and healthy relationships and, and lots of silliness and laughing and meeting up at national parks and Disney and Stuff like that. I don't need them to come and take care of me. I don't want them to come and take care of me. I know that with my physical limitations and as, you know, I have RA, it's going to progress. I don't want them taking care of me. Nope. I want them to get out and live life and seize the fucking diem, carpe the diem, out of this world. Just, I want them to do it all. I didn't have kids for the purpose of having someone to take care of me. And this is, you know, when I started having kids, I didn't know I had RA. With Mariah, my youngest, I did know. I didn't bring them into this world to take care of me later. No, that's James's job to, as my partner and mine as his to take care of each other and to, you know, be as prudent as we can from now till then so that we have the resources to take care of ourselves. And you guys don't have to agree with that. And I know a lot of traditions and cultures, it's not that way, but that's, that's where I'm at. And it's my journal and it's my kids. And that's what I'm talking about. It'll be my old age in a wheelchair somewhere. So <clears throat> all of that to say it's time for more coffee and more crafting and I'm going to go squeeze the cat again, even though she's really getting tired of it. <laughs> she just doesn't seem to understand that she is my comfort animal. It's like, I thought that was part of the deal when she moved in. You know, cat, you are here for cuddles. Yeah, she, no. <laughs> I'm getting a lot done. And that's good. 
and I'm tidying up and I know I'll be able to get a lot more. I have like 900 videos that I want to do for this channel. I have them all planned out, plotted out and for the other channels, but especially this one. But it's stuff that is just too hard to do when the kids are here. The setting up for recording and the subject matter, the topics and things. It's just can't do it when there's mom, Reagan did this. Mom, can I use my tablet? Mom, I want to do more Minecraft. Let's go do more Minecraft, which is fine. I love doing more Minecraft, but <laughs> it's not conducive to making videos. I don't know how people work from home, like do the remote stuff with kids at home. I salute you. Men, women, you, you're amazing. You're amazing that can do that because that ain't me. So uh, hopefully, I'm not making any kind of promises. I've told my kids since they were babies, I don't make promises because I don't know if I can keep them. The only promises I make is, you know, I love you. I will do everything I can to take care of you. Mama will always love you and fight tigers for you. But beyond that, uh, Mama don't make promises. And if I'm half asleep, and this is a rule that carries over from my own mother, if you ask me something and I agree to it when I'm half asleep, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> and I think that's fair. Ah, but anyway, I am going to attempt, I have every plan and intention to get like 500 videos done for this channel. Stuff that I'm so excited about, product reviews and um, several Ask Mama videos. We're going to talk about, oh my God, we're going to talk about vaginosis, um, herpes, um, why we shave our armpits. Like, <laughs> What's better, waxing, nair, or shaving? Like we're going to, all of it. All of it. All. <laughs> and it's going to be fun. I'm also going to start exploring, especially now as I'm getting able to walk more and more, I'm going to be exploring some cemeteries across Utah and then outside of Utah. I've always loved cemeteries and graveyards and, and have been to so many and I love it. But I'm going to start um, visiting cemeteries and just, I'm not sure exactly what that will entail, but it's percolating up there in my brain. I'm coming up with something, so stay tuned. Anyway, I am Julie. This has been my journal. It's back to school time. And it's hard. And it's a silly, simple thing, maybe. But it's my situation here in my journal that I'm, that I'm living today. This is my life. And um, thanks for sharing it with me. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful day. And I will see you very soon, either in a rambling journal like this or in one of the 500 videos that I have planned.